Hello again. Um, I want to look at something that really puzzles my uh, pupils and, and students. Um, that's cost curves. Theory of the firm, industrial economics, costs and revenues and profit areas and, and sales maximization and all the revenue maximization, profit maximization, all these things. People get very confused, especially if you don't have much uh, maths uh, confidence. Uh, you can get very confused on these diagrams. But there are some rules that you should see, some fundamental rules regarding cost curves which are going to help you understand these diagrams and help you understand the way that businesses uh, make decisions and behave in markets. So um, I want to start with cost curves and, and we're going to look at three cost curves. Marginal cost, MC, average cost, AC, total cost, TC. I'm not talking about fixed and variable costs and other definitions of cost, direct, indirect, expenses, overheads, all these things. No, I just want to focus on these three for the diagram's sakes. Um, and first of all, I'm going to look at MC. MC is going to be shaped like this. What do I mean by this? Well, let's just label the, the axes. This is costs, and this is output. MC is what we call U-shaped. It, it falls and then it rises, and it rises ever more steeply. What's happening here is it turns because of diminishing marginal returns. This is implying that, at first, as we create more output, the extra cost, the marginal extra cost of producing one more unit is falling. Of course there is a marginal cost, that's why the curve is always above zero. Zero. It's above zero. There is always a cost to making another unit, but that cost is not always the same because of diminishing marginal returns. And you should read up the law of diminishing marginal returns to understand that. But regardless of that, you, you can learn merely that the MC curve is always this shape. It turns and after this point, any extra unit will cost more extra than the unit before it. So for instance, if this is the ninth unit, the ninth unit costs an extra that much. And that's more than the eighth unit. The eighth unit only costs that much, and so on. So it's, it's U-shaped like this. Now, the average cost curve will also be U-shaped, and it will cut the, the MC, and the MC will cut through the AC at the lowest point of the AC. Always. This is a mathematical certainty. Let me, and, and, and I know that people find this difficult, but let me explain to you why. I want you to imagine that you're in a room, um, that you are exactly two meters tall, and you're in a room with a hundred other people. Everyone is precisely two meters tall. What's the average height of the people in the room? Of course, it's two meters. If an extra person, a marginal person, an extra person walked in who was only one meter tall, what would happen to the average? height of the people in the room. Of course, the average would fall because the marginal had, was lower than the average. And that's what we see happening to every point up to Q1. The marginal cost is lower than the average cost, so it's dragging the average down. Take this unit, for instance. This unit has a marginal cost of that much. That's less than the average, so it's making the average fall. But beyond this point, the marginal is higher than the average, and now it's pulling the average up. It's a bit like a three meter tall giant walking into the room and dragging up the average height of people in the room. In other words, to get rid of my silly analogy of people in a room, what happens to average cost is determined by whether the marginal cost of a product is higher or lower than the average. When the marginal is less than the average, it pulls the average down. When the marginal is higher than the average, it raises the average, it pulls the average up. And the defining point is, is, is Q here. Up to that point, the marginal, even if the marginal is rising, even if the marginal is rising, the marginal is less than the average, so the average is falling. Beyond this unit, Q1, the marginal cost is high now, and it's higher than the average, so it's dragging the average up. And for those of you who like this sort of thing, you'll note that when the marginal is a long way below the average, the average is being dragged down more quickly. The gradient is steeper. But when the marginal is just below the average, the average is barely falling. And when the marginal is just above the average, the average is barely rising. But when the marginal is a long way above the average, the average is pulled up more steeply. So this relationship between MC and AC is critical. You must always remember that, that this takes place. The MC cuts the AC at the minimum point of the AC. Now, what about total cost? Well, we don't draw total cost with this because the scale of cost is completely different to the scale of cost used for totals. And I'm looking at total cost. Sorry about the writing. But the output scale is the same, so we can work with this output scale. 
Now, total cost is always rising. Total cost has to be rising because there is always a positive extra cost when making a unit. The MC is always above zero. So total cost is rising. Total cost is going to start not at zero because there is some fixed cost even when output is zero. So total cost is rising. Until this point, it will be rising but less and less steeply because the extra cost is falling. Beyond this point, when the extra cost of each additional unit is rising and rising, this picks up. And so it's, we have this funny kind of curve. Okay? Um, so there are cost curves. Uh, there's no difference whether we're talking about a perfectly competitive industry or a monopoly or oligopoly or monopolistically competitive. doesn't matter. Cost curves look like this. Occasionally, on the A level, which I'm teaching, you may, you may see a reference to constant costs, which is very easy. It's just horizontal AC and MC curve and TC rises linear style. But the truth is it's like this. All right, I hope that, uh, I hope that's some help to you. Okay, bye-bye.